So I was talking to a friend the other day and she was telling me how horribly disappointed her daughter is at having to have missed her college graduation. And she was moping around the house, really unable to bounce back. And my, my friend finally said to her, look, we are all disappointed about this graduation, but you're gonna need to keep this in some perspective. The neighbor just lost her husband to this virus. And as I thought about that exchange, I thought about how many of us over these last few months have gotten caught by this comparative suffering. We've kind of looked at somebody else's situation and thought, oh my gosh, that, that's so much worse. I really don't deserve to be upset. Or we look at them and we think, where do they get off being upset? I, I just lost my job. But you see, empathy is not finite. And Compassion is not like pieces of a pizza pie that once they're all gobbled up, it's gone for good. It doesn't work that way. In fact, the opposite is true, that the more you express it, the more it grows. The neighbor is not going to somehow benefit if you reserve all of your kindness for her only and then turn around and withhold it for your child who is, is really upset that they've missed their final lacrosse season. I mean, it's important, of course, to, to keep things into perspective, but at the end of the day, hurt is hurt. And empathy is not about connecting to the same experience. It's about connecting to the emotion that underpins the experience. And, and, and if you've ever experienced for any reason, grief or sadness or loneliness or anger, then you qualify to express empathy to anybody for any reason. I think that's why Jesus called us to bear one another's burdens. And the nice thing is, is that we can model empathy for our children. All we need to do is to really listen to the experiences they are describing and then to help them to understand the emotion that is underneath what they're talking about. And then perhaps to think of other people in their lives, relatives or neighbors, who may be, for different reasons, experiencing the same kind of emotion and then help them to connect with that person around those experiences. Scripture calls us to weep with those who weep and to rejoice with those who rejoice. And I think love is the last thing we need to ration right now. Let us pray. Gracious God, may we have eyes to see and a heart to offer loving care to those around us. During this time of quarantine, use each one of us to be a blessing to those in sadness of any kind and help us to encourage and support the joy of those who are rejoicing. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.